In the capital of the autonomous Spanish province of Andalusia is the Royal Palace of Seville, Real Alcazar. There have been numerous transformations of power between the Christians and the Muslims. The Christian roots of Seville date back to the first century, and Christian dominion continued until the Moorish conquest in the year 712 AD. After this, Islam was the dominant force. The Moorish al Mohaden chose Seville as their main residence and with it bequeathed a great heritage, evidence of their extraordinary culture. In 1248, Ferdinand III conquered the city and finally annexed it to the Christian realm. The palace complex was subsequently enlarged. Real Alcazar was built on the ruins of a Roman fortress. The earliest Moorish citadel dates back to the 8th century when the Almohaden transformed it into a palace. Following the city's conquest, the Christian kings, and most notably Don Pedro, employed the best Moorish builders and artists the Mudejaren. And so this historic gem can still be visited today, a building complex that covers several epochs. Hall of the Envoys, the wall tiles contain many Moorish designs. It was here that the ruling kings received foreign envoys that were undoubtedly impressed by the opulence of their surroundings. Furnishings and household goods of the royal private rooms were collected from around most of the known world. Valuable mementos of our highly artistic past. The audience chamber is where, on the 14th of January 1503, the country's trading agreement with the West Indies was agreed. The ornate, long wooden ceiling was created and carved by Martin Infante. The gala dining room is particularly outstanding. A huge table dominates almost the entire length of the room and it contains precious wall carpets and crystal chandeliers from Murano. This section of the palace was built in 1364. It is similar in style to the Muslim palaces of the Alhambra in Granada, but with complex Christian elements and designs. In the upper royal private rooms are those of the Infanten, so called because they had been used by the daughters of Queen Isabella. Through barred 
broad windows there are views of the gardens that measure approximately seven hectares and differ both in the time of their origin and in their dimension. Again, barred windows offer views of the courtyards, some of which contain a rich variety of plants. And in the centre of some of the courtyards, there is a small water fountain that adds to the calm atmosphere. Moorish arcades lead to Andalusian gardens that are also referred to as the Spanish Muslim gardens and were planted in place of the original kitchen gardens. Tiny steps, flanked by large decorated flower pots, lead from the numerous levels of the arcades down into the various gardens. From each direction, the top of the old castle palace is visible. It was forbidden to plant fruit trees in the palace's neat quadrangular gardens. Especially popular are the decorated statues of various shapes and sizes that have been allocated special sections of the gardens. Yellow walls and passageways connect the areas that were originally the front gardens of the various palace buildings. One can only imagine their former magnificence. Today, the garden's tiled benches are still a good place to relax, and tiny water basins adorned with beautiful statues, animate the Andalusian ambience. In these luxurious gardens, Spain's royal families walked in tranquil isolation from their subjects. Real Alcazar, the most beautiful example of Mudejar design, a fairy tale from the 1001 Nights.